Hello, I'm CTO and co-founder of Bluzel Networks. And today I'm going to be demonstrating the use of the Bluzel database from an Ethereum Solidity smart contract. Our objective today is going to be twofold. We're going to demonstrate how a Solidity developer can deploy their own smart contract that uses the Bluzel database to read and write a key value pair of data. Afterwards, we will actually do the read and write value to demonstrate that the connection between the smart contract and Bluezell is complete. So we're going to make some assumptions here. The viewer is adept with Ethereum and writing smart contracts in Solidity. They have MetaMask installed on their browser and configured as needed. And they have sufficient Ethereum from the Robster network to complete their testing. The viewer also has the Bluezell desktop CRUD application installed. Part one of the smart contract uh, demo will be the, the deployment, where we'll be copying over some pre-written smart contract code to the Ethereum Remix IDE, which is a web browser app to build and compile smart contracts. We will be compiling and deploying the smart contract to the Robston test network using Robston Ethereum, and then we'll be retrieving the ABI and the contracts address that we will use later when we're testing the smart contract. Part two will be usage of the smart contract, where we'll be setting up my Ether wallet with the smart contracts ABI and address. We'll then on chain do a create operation from my Ether wallet. We will then verify that the create was completed using a read off chain with our desktop CRUD application. We'll then mo modify that value using an update again from the off chain desktop CRUD application. And finally, we'll read the value back on chain from my Ether wallet. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to access the actual code, which is stored on GitHub. This is a publicly accessible URL. And we will go to the dApp. And you can see sample dApp public.sol. And we will grab the raw copy of it. And we will paste that into the IDE. So we're going to go to remix.ethereum.org. And we're going to paste it here. We're going to create a new file. We'll paste it here. So actually, we need to create that file first. The file name doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll paste it here. It'll take a moment, but uh, on the right here, the compiler will just go through the code. Let's not worry about the warnings. They're not important. We'll go to settings. Let's make sure that we have the right compiler version. We're going to use uh, 0 0.24, 0 0.4.24. And let's make sure that optimization is enabled. This might take a moment or so to load, so just give it a moment. And now, when we come over here to run, uh, let's make sure that it says Injected Web 3. That allows us to use our Ethereum account to deploy this to Robston. Now, one of the things we need to do is we need to set the UUID. Think of this like the name of your database. And this enables you to have a separate database from everyone else in the world so you don't have namespace collisions. So we have to put our name in quotes. And we're just going to call this um, enterprise underscore demo. OK? So we're going to call it enterprise underscore demo. And we're going to click deploy. So MetaMask is going to come up, and it's going to ask us if we want to uh, deploy this contract. We're going to edit the gas fee, and we're just going to set it to 40 to make sure this goes through reasonably quickly. And we'll confirm. And now we're just waiting for the smart contract to get deployed to Robston. So here we are on Etherscan uh, for Robston to see that this uh, smart contract is getting deployed. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we've already come to my Ether wallet here, and you go to the contract tab, and we need two pieces of information in order to use the contract after it's deployed. We need the address, and we need the API. ABI. So, looks like this has already been put onto the blockchain, as you can see here. So let's just reload this page. And in fact, we can go right back to Remix, go to Compile, click on Details and go down here and copy the ABI. So we have that available to us. 
So we'll go over here and paste that. And then we can come back to the ether scan. And here, if we click on this link right here under two, the contract got created at this address. So we can copy that as well, paste that in here. Now, one of the key things to make sure of is that up here on Ether, my Ether wallet, you put in Network Robston. There's several options. Just make sure that you've done that or else you're not going to have any luck going forward with this. Now, once you click access, you should see the smart contract address and all the functions. Let's verify this is the right contract by getting access to the UUID that we already set. So if you click on current UUID, you see enterprise demo. So we know that this is the right contract. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do an add and that creates a new value within this namespace. And let's just call it Bluezell as a keyword and network as a value. And we're going to click on MetaMask, connect to MetaMask and write. Now, we're using something called Oracleize, which is a middle service that connects Ethereum with Bluezell. And that middle service needs to be able to have some Ether so that it can make callbacks into Ethereum and send us the responses and status data for all our requests. So we need to send some Ether ahead of time as part of the transaction to enable that. So I'm going to send about six thousandths of an Ether as part of this. That's about the minimum I recommend. Um, I'm going to click Generate Transaction. Yes. And again, this time we're doing a create. So I'm going to again set the gas fee, the gas price to 40. Click save, confirm. And there we go. We did the create. Um, now we're awaiting the transaction to complete. Now in the meantime, we're going to load up our CRUD client, our GUI CRUD client over here and we're going to go to testnet.bluzel.com we're going to put enterprise underscore demo and 51010 and go and right now as you can see there's no data in that database it's empty we're waiting for this transaction to complete Okay, it looks like the transaction is completed. So we're going to go over here, and as you can see, actually, Bluezell has appeared, and it says network. So we've just demonstrated a create succeeded by doing a read off chain with the Bluezell CRUD client, which is right over here. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to change this value from network to something else. So let's just change it to enterprise. And we're going to click save. Right. So now we've just done an update off chain. The value has now been changed to enterprises. So we're going to now go back to my Ether wallet. And instead of doing an add, we're going to do a get value for the same key. What we want to do is read back the value of that key value pair from the Bluezell database. And we want to prove that the value we just updated got indeed updated and we can read it back into the Ethereum smart contract. So again, we're going to do a write. We're going to see us still leave 6,000th of an Ether as our fee to Oracleize. Generate the transaction. Yes, we're going to run it. We're now going to, again, set the gas price to 40. Click save and send it through. And we're now going to wait this transaction to complete. Now, one of the interesting things we can look at here, this is the smart contract itself. And this is the transaction that we just sent two seconds ago. This is the read. It's pending still. Now, if we go in here and look at some of the other transactions, this transaction here was the ad when we actually added Buzel Networks. So that was the, the ad. And if we go over here, this actually is a transaction initiated from Oracleize back to our smart contract, which is a callback. So this was an acknowledgement from Oracleize that the create succeeded. Now, in order to successfully do a read, we actually need 
that callback. It's vital because that callback actually contains the value that has gotten read. So we actually have to wait for that callback to complete in order to complete our read operation. So let's go back here and look if our create is our create is still pending. And so we'll just have to wait for that to complete. And meanwhile, let's go over here and see get value when you run it, it'll initiate the read. And when the result comes back, it'll update the smart contract in order to see what last value was read. You click on this value here. And right now it's blank because we haven't read any values back yet. Or at least we haven't completed that. Now let's see what's going on here. Now the read has completed, or at least the initiation of it is completed. We're now going to go and look at our smart contract. And actually, you can see that there's already a pending transaction here. This is the callback that came back from the database and through Oracleize with the response, as in the red value. So we're waiting for this to complete. And once this completes, we should be able to read back the new value into our smart contract. So let's just wait for this to complete. And then the value, last value read should get updated. Okay, so let's just uh, go down here and refresh. And there you go, enterprises. As you can see, the new value of that key value pair has been read successfully into um, our smart contract. And that really completes our, um, our demo. We wanted to show create, read, update, and then read again. We won't do a delete in this demo, but you can infer what that would uh, be like. And then uh, finally, for next steps, if you uh, want to start using um, the Buzel database or any of the platform connectors we have, please go to https://buzel.com/developers-guide. Thank you very much.